I was sure was such tough decision, the shelf will be empty and a lot of, and the market will be restructured. And I saw that this is a golden opportunity to be here. And the, the biggest challenge for the local brands is the go-to-market, not the production itself. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the VC4A Founder Series. This is a podcast where startup founders share their stories of resilience and answer questions about the challenges and opportunities encountered during their entrepreneurship journey. This series is a collection of conversations with founders highlighting the ingenuity required to thrive in uncertain markets, make it through high friction situations and past crises. Each episode highlights a different founder and the unique set of challenges they are facing. My name is David Coleman. I am the growth lead at VC4A and I will be your host. Welcome, Mohammed. Hi, David. How's everything? And thank you uh, uh, for inviting me for this such uh, episode. We're super and happy to have you here, man. Thank you Likewise. for joining us. So Bimo is a, is a social commerce and parallel distribution platform. But what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a loaded statement, right? <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, Bimo, as you mentioned, as you told, it's a social commerce and parallel distribution platform. In in a in a in a country like Egypt, uh, the local manufacturers have great challenges in order to ensure their product availability in all location at all time. So, although Egypt is one of the biggest African markets with hundred million people, but more than 65% of the local manufacturers are extremely underutilized. This is because of the go-to-market challenges. So what we are doing in Brimor is we are enabling them to overcome this challenge and to allow them a nationwide coverage across the whole Egypt through a unique and innovative go-to-market model, which is relying on a network of individuals acting as micro distributors for the products, selling them and repairing them to surrounding circles. So the manufacturer in Cairo can sell their product in Aswan, which is 1000 kilometer square part of the Cairo, without need to a huge investment in warehouses, in sales reps, in marketing campaigns, in credit sales, so this simply what we are doing because actually if, if you are producing a product mm -hmm. the normal way is you have to produce a product and this is the lowest cost this is the, the minimal cost of of the full value chain is the production cost but you have to hire a sales team you hire to rent warehouses across the country and after that you have to spend a lot of money on the marketing in order to get to make the awareness of your product uh, for the consumers then you have to sell your new product across and put it and make it available across half million retail outlets in egypt with credit sales because the retailers they will not accept to buying cash from a new manufacturer or for a new product so we are using the same budget but in a smarter way and in a more cash flow efficient way. So the manufacturer is producing and we buy the inventory on credit. And we sell the products through our individuals and we subsidize big amount of, 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 of the marketing budget in, in the price of the product to be appealing and to be the best value for money for the consumer. And we are allocating all the sales and marketing expenses for the people who buy and sell the product. So we eliminate all the parties out of the sales transaction and out of the referral transaction. So what we are doing is we are making the product itself to finance the full value chain. So we are using like 50%, we are taking 50% to 60% discount on the consumer price from the manufacturer. But actually, the actual cost is realized after the sales transaction, and this is what we are doing. 
but this is you you haven't always been running this business you you have your own backstory what 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 were you doing before and how did that lead up to to starting this business actually my core experience is in end to end distribution management i spent 10 years working in this industry i was super lucky that in in the beginning of my career i joined one of the biggest distributors in Egypt. We distributed for Procter & Gamble, Pepsi, Kellogg's, Heinz, a lot of big names. And actually, we did a lot of great work. And I was super lucky that the phase that I joined the distributor, it was a transformation. So few months after joining the company, I booked a key seat in a multifunctional team called Business Development Team which was responsible for taking the company to the next level. And actually we did it. We took the company at that time in 2009 to go from $100 million as an annual revenue to $400 million in revenue in four years. But I noticed that all the success are coming with a partnership of a huge local company or a huge multinational company. And actually I noticed a lot of good and the high quality local brands that couldn't find a way to join the company and to list their products with us because they couldn't afford the investment and the fees that we, re we requested at the time. And part of them even if they crossed and invested a lot of money, they couldn't afford the operations requirement and the marketing support and the trade marketing support and the credit sales. It's really hectic. So in, a, in Egypt, like 500 to 600 companies can afford such model. It's P&G, Unilever, Apple, Samsung. So this big names or the huge local company that started in a in a certain period of time, like 30 years ago or 40 years ago, and take a special advantage from the government, so become a huge local company. So in this time, I had a lot of questions. How these products find an alternative to find their ways to the Egyptian people and for the home market, for, and for, for a lot of homes? After that, I, I, I left the company and I started, uh, actually, I started a freelance project with a very small company in Alexandria. This is the second big city in Egypt I'm originally from. The very, this, this a very small company in a basement in a rural area in, in Alexandria. They are working with the multi-level marketing or the direct selling approach. And they were making a lot of losses and they want to move to be a traditional distributor targeting the wholesaler and the retailer. So I found that, that it's perfect opportunity to utilize my experience to transform this small company. And when I discovered the model, immediately I got the all answers for, for the questions I had. I found a way that can be alternative for especially the local brands to find their way to the Egyptian people and to get the, the opportunity to, to be tribal, to, 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 to be available, to be sampled, but to take the, 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 the conventional industry, which is direct selling or multi-level marketing, to be, be a primor, it took like four years of research and a lot of customization on the model to be, to come up with a unique model, which is no special, no, no, no similar company for what we are doing actually in the world as per three years of research. Yeah. And that's, that's my next question, really. You've got, you've got a great idea. You know uh, the, the, the way, the philosophy is there, but then how do you turn that into a business? How, how do you, what, was, what were those steps? And how did you, how did you think you were going, it was going to work out versus how it really worked out? Because it's never, it's never the same, right? What was, what was that journey like? Actually, David, uh, I believe in, in, in the concept of window. So every successful business needs the right time, the window that 
we have to 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 start and to establish the company and the business or the idea in it and actually this window was in egypt in 2016. at that time i i quoted the company because it wasn't the right partnership and i had to sold my shares to my partner in this small company also we did a lot of success we did 10x in one year but for 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 a lot of reasons I I uh, I I, ha I had to sold my shares and I spent a couple of years as a management consultant, having some assignments in Egypt, Lebanon, KSE, working on distribution and uh, enhancing the go-to-market tactics. So I spent like three years working on the model, on the customization of the model. And when we are in in 2016 in Egypt, we we, we faced we are we had facing a huge challenge as a country with the devaluation of the egyptian bond of the local currency mm -hmm. so in this period egypt had to take a very tough challenge tough decision by the devaluation of the local currency to end the the, the chaos between the official uh, usd price and the black market it was a case and it, is, it was a, a huge variance between the official prices and in the black market. So the country decided to devaluate the Egyptian pound. So the USD dollars was raised from 6.5 Egyptian pound to 18.5 Egyptian pound. And actually three to five months before this decision, I, 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 I realized it. And as a country, a lot of FMCG and the consumables were imported. And I, I, I was sure with such tough decision, the shelf will be empty and a lot of, and the market will be restructured. And I saw that this is a golden opportunity to be here. And the, the biggest challenge for the local brands is the go-to market, not the production itself, because every, everyone in Egypt uh, think about PNG as a manufacturer. So they, they, they claim that they can build a better, a bigger manufacturer facility and producing better product. But actually, PNG is a branding company. They own the market. They own the brand, not the manufacturer. So a lot of the majority of the local manufacturers in Egypt are really producing really high quality products. But all the challenge is the go-to market, how these products will be sold and how to be available. So I saw this, this is a golden opportunity. This is a golden window to come up with Brimor alongside with my co-founders to, 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 to have, to, to take the local brands safely in a, in a, in a, in a golden, in a, in a, in a relaxed environment without hard competition because a lot of imported products were started to be disappeared from the Egyptian market because of the price of the dollar. So this this is was one of the the, the, the the most important aspects for the timing of Brimor. Right. That's that's smart. You've you've identified you know a, a solution. You've also identified a, a window of opportunity where you can actually um, leverage that that idea and probably bring it and have it uh, received in a way that people really under, uh, appreciate the value. But along the along the road, you need you need some things to happen to give you that confidence that okay, we are on the right track. What was what was that turning point? What, or maybe sometimes there's there's multiple uh, points along the journey when you you, you realize wow when this this works so well and or this works well but now we, if we just tweak it just a little bit it actually multiplies <laughs> rather than just you know adds what, what were some of those points yeah uh, actually that's a good question what what we are doing well is new for the old stakeholders because for, it's new for us because actually we can position brimor as a conventional direct selling like even lady model or amway or tupperware because actually we are breaking all the rules of the direct selling. We are welcoming the retail sales. We are produce. We are selling the products that we are not. We are not producing the conventional direct selling and the conventional multi-level marketing 
is is originally acting as a forward integration. They started with the manufacturing facility with the brand and then selling it exclusively to a network of individuals. So, so they are specialized in a, in a certain and a specific line of products or a specific category, like Tupperware is a containers, Amway is family products, Herbalife is weight loss programs, even perfume. So it's, so we are not the conventional direct selling and we are not a conventional distributors because we are not targeting the retail outlets or the wholesalers at all. So mm-hmm. we are we have we have a mix that's that's new for the manufacturer because they didn't uh, they didn't expose uh, exposed to, to it before. And actually, the 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 early adapters of our customer the re- the early adapters of of, of our customers where the people are working in the direct selling industry because we took the infrastructure, the, 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 the main uh, compensation block of the direct selling. Actually, the direct selling is solving a brilliant problem, a, a very uh, huge problem that if, I, if, if, if this mobile uh, is equal 10, the price of this mobile is $10. So David will buy it for eight, and sell it to Ben for 10. Mm-hmm. So I'm okay at the company. David make $2 as a profit and Ben mm-hmm. uh, got uh, best value for money profit. So if Ben wants to replicate what David did, mm-hmm. if he sold, if he, he sells the, the mobile for 12, becomes inflated. If, he, if he's going directly to the company and got it for eight and sell it for 10, David lost important customer and lost his margin. So the direct selling is solving this problem and just this is only what we took from the direct selling is to compensate David. David can make a huge, mar- a, a big margin with low volume when sell directly to consumer. And if he attracted a bigger market, he will take a very slim margin on it. So it come compensated so we started with the customers that we that we were working in the direct selling industry in egypt in the conventional companies like oriflame or a big local company called my way and this model was extremely new for them because they, they, they couldn't understand well, how come you are not producing product you are selling everything mm-hmm. how this how come this you are not specialized this is not a super product we are claiming availability. We are claiming abundance of the products. We are, we are claiming all you need in the homes. This, this is this is very new, on on the direct selling company. So all because of this model was new for all the stakeholders. So we were, we had a lot of assumptions. Are is will be successful? Do we did we we will see a reordering? Is, 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 is it will be profitable for the ladies? Can they sell everything? Can they sell high drop size like uh, electric appliance or uh, blank sheets? And we started that in late 2017, started real operations and the real Brimor was started in, in because we started Brimor as a, we started by private labeling. So to just to bridge the, the, the huge gap between not having a production facility and selling other products and but the real operation with this model was launched late 2017 in December and in 2018 we started to witness a huge demand on this model and the ladies make a lot of profit because they they became very empowered they sell everything. They sell in Ramadan. They sell in they sell in in summer. They sell in winter. They sell in back to school because we have everything. We are claiming abundance, so we are every month we are listing like fifty or sixty new products. We are giving a lot of market access to a lot of suppliers, and actually we are developing the supplier itself because a lot is a supplier when 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 he got assured of the demand. He de- he's developing a lot of new products and uh, launching a lot of new products because he's 
He has a big manufacturing facility and extremely underutilized. So, so we started to witness a huge demand from the, the customers and actually a great response from the suppliers. That's why we raised our early, our pre-seed fund from Flat Six Labs in August 20, 2018. And from September, how much did you? How many? How much was that? Fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, seventy seventy thousand uh, dollars. And we did in the last four months what we did in the eight months. And it, after two months of raising this seed fund, we started our seed fundraise. And in the beginning of year, we closed our seed fund of $800,000 from five VCs in Egypt for the first time ever to bring Algebra Ventures for a early stage investment and for, for having Endure Capital and Algebra Ventures as a co-lead. And we were the first startup to get a follow-on funding from Flatix Labs for the first time. Wow. So the eight hundred thousand dollars was yeah. yeah was 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 a, but, was a great round okay you've clearly you've you've you've, you've the idea works um you're getting people excited because they are they're it's something they've never even considered is now not only you know working but it's working well um uh, people are feeling empowered so they're going all out selling all kinds of products really pushing pushing um pushing your products but internally, let's look internally for a minute. How do you how do you manage that? First of all, you're doing something that nobody's ever, nobody's really doing. Um, so you have to build your own systems. You have to build your own. Um, you have to do your own research. You have to figure out what what you need to know and who who what kind of positions you need internally. You know your your team. What what was that in, uh, internal journey like? What what were you doing in house? To, to manage all of this and to create it really, not, not just, you know, how yeah. did you do that? That's, uh, that's a very interesting question because it was, it's, it was very painful. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, actually there are two angles. The first one is for the people and the second one is from the processes and systems. The, process, the processes and systems are extremely painful and we, we built a very solid technical know-how but it was very costly because we lost a lot of our customers we, we lost a huge number of customers because we have demand but due to the nature of the business we couldn't fulfill the demand efficiently because we faced that the warehousing industry in egypt when we started the company our strategy was to focus on what we are the core of the model and to outsource everything else. Mm -hmm. So even we started to outsource the technology and we outsource the warehousing through third party logistics and we outsourced the courier. But we discovered that the warehousing industry in Egypt was built to support the traditional business. So to receive cases or ballots and to dispatch from the warehouse case because they, this is the unit of the quest of the unit of sales for the retailer. But for our business, the ladies are requesting a collective order of pieces mm -hmm. and with the different categories. So they are requesting a, a, a bottle of shampoo and a perfume and uh, underwear and the casual wear. So the warehousing industry can, can, couldn't deal with that and couldn't handle that. And for the e-commerce, the majority of the, of the orders are single item order. So as a consumer, you are ordering mobile, you are ordering laptop. So the courier can handle a lot of orders at the same time. You can, uh, he can handle it with a bike, but for our orders, they are micro distributors. So the average weight of our order is 32 kilograms. Four big cases or three big cases. So we, we, we need a special courier with trucks and uh, the courier have to handle minimal number of orders, but with a huge volume. So 
this was very, very painful yeah. in order to build that. And this has led to the second angle, which is the people. We actually, I bet on, 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 a, on a very good strategy I learned from PNG that promote with them and to have the people made in the company. And we bet on the people made in Brimor. Out of my co-founders, Ahmed Sheikha is handling the, the product uh, and the business development uh, aspect. And Mahmoud Rafai, uh, our third co-founder, is handling the sales. He has 20 years of experience in direct selling out of, out of my co-founders. And actually, uh, we, I bet on a young talent. I bet that if we make our people and we bet on their development rate and the growth rate we will win everything so i bet on five young talents that brimor is their first step in their careers and with their five talents adding to my co-founders and our head of technology that joined us in october 2019 we grew the company from $100,000 in annual revenue in 2018 to $1.5 million in 2019 to $10 million in 2020. And they are com completing their careers and their success stories with Brimor taking it to $50 million in annual revenue in 2022, inshallah. Wow. Uh -huh. So, you you have you have you've had to overcome a lot then because you had to create your own model internally. Um, but what what do you think is your um, what is what they call it an unfair advantage? What do you think is your unfair advantage in uh, in all of this? What made what made Brimor so special? Is it because one of the things that that I like that you always say is that you call your distributors your your your, your the ladies who do you call them your heroes? You know. Yeah. What was it? Was it that kind of thinking of really not making it about you, but making it about the value that you put in your, in the market? What What do you think made it work so well? Look, made it work so well. Sure, there there are many sub unfair advantages. You can take it with the wide range of the products. You can call the 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 very competitive. Um, offering for our heroes uh, as a profit margin because we are allocating a big part of season marketing expenses so they, 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 they are making from 25 to 40 percent um, uh, profit on their monthly operating capital um, you can call it that we are the first mover to, uh, to the market and we are creating an, a parallel market, which is our market. This is the dynamics and the rules and the tactics and the terms of the market are, um, we are created it. But I think that all these are sub topics, sub unfair advantage. The core unfair advantage is the business model itself, the company itself, how we are mixing this. Actually, one of, what, one of my dreams before Brimor is to create something authentic, to create something from us. With all my respect for the whole startups and the, the entrepreneurship landscape in Egypt and Africa as well, because actually it's, this is a, it's a something else because in Egypt, when I was exposed to a lot of African people and businesses in, in, in the, the VC for Africa showcase. And I spent uh, one week with African Entrepreneurship Award. In every time to, when we expose to African, we, we, we feel that Egypt is more related to Africa, more than it's a Middle Eastern company. Or we share the same challenges. We will change the same shit. We are sharing, we're sharing a, lot of, a lot of things. But back to, back to the topic. I, I noticed and I witnessed that every startup in the Egypt or in the continent is looking for the, the, the original model 
in the Europe or in the, in the US. But it became, unfortunately, it became a question, the first question when you approach the investor. So where did you see this model? Is this any proof for this model in US or in Europe? In US and Europe, it's not, an, it's not like in Egypt. Mm -hmm. It's not like in Egypt. It's not a structure, the market, the, the needs, the hopes, the expectations are not the same. So we didn't come with, we didn't come with, with, with an innovation. We got inspired by a lot of models, but we claim that what we are doing is we are doing typically for our country and for our continent. So you can find in our heroes a tech savvy that using our mobile app and ordering and using all the touch points with, 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 with the mobile app, but also we have illiterate heroes that making the same amount of money or better with the same offering and with the same promotions and with the same tactics. So if, if, we, if, if we'll do the business in the US, it's, it's tech related. Yeah, and that's why we didn't start it by the tech, by the, by tech. we outsourced the technology. And recently we, we, we released our mobile app three months ago mm -hmm. because it doesn't make any sense that if I can't assure that I, I will release the order or I will fulfill the order, I, I, I couldn't know how I will dispatch the order or the fulfill the demand and uh, leaving this to focus on building a state of art uh, product or mobile app doesn't make any sense. I love so that. We I think, yeah, sorry. So I think the fact that you, you based it on the market and how the market operates, the kind of needs that the market has, the way the market operates, um, uh, intrinsically and naturally do you think that that helped you when you know in in 2020 you were you weren't following a set model already you were already on your on your own back road doing <laughs> all by yourself anyway and then you know uh, the pandemic hit and people who who had very strict um idea in their heads of this is how my business works, and this is how we are supposed to make money. They might have, you know, struggled a little bit because everybody had to be agile. How did, do you think that helped you? Actually, I started to communicate with my team that I see this is a golden opportunity for our business because social commerce, by definition, is relying on the network and on the communication and on the relation between people and each other, right? On the recommendation. So if, if, the, if our heroes have capacity to stay on the internet and to stay in, in their homes, they will work better and they will do a greater job. And if we can fulfill, so no retail outlets, no malls anyway, anyway no showrooms, and Egypt as a country are not ready, full ready, to, to shut down the retail immediately, to transform immediately. So originally we are, we, we, we are uh, selling uh, by phone calls and online. So this is our original business. Mm -hmm. Actually, the direct selling industry in Egypt depends on the retail. They have like 30 branches and uh, their line of products and uh, all the people go to the retail outlets to get their needs. So. I communicated my team that I, I see that this is a golden opportunity for, for us. And I believe guys that we will pass it safely and bolder and bigger than before. The uniqueness of your, of your model allows you to now double down on, on, on the model because your model was already much more flexible than the traditional. So what were those what did you, but no matter what industry you are in, one that could, has potential to, to do well during this pandemic or not, everybody had to adjust. What, what did you have to adjust within your business in order to, to not just maybe survive, but actually, um, you know, do well? 
actually the first we bet on the basics the stables so we assume that all the people will eat so we have to adjust our product portfolio to 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 move to be more in stables in food and beverage this will be our winning and fighter products but actually we witnessed that the household items and all the marriage stuff had a huge spike because the marriage market and most of our customers are mid 40s mid 30s so they have daughters and one of the biggest market for our heroes is the marriage preparation so marriage preparation is a lifetime project mm -hmm. in egypt uh, in our tradition uh, the 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 bride shouldn't buy any stuff related to marriage for the for the first three years in her marriage so they are buying the the, the textile by sizes and by colors so this industry and this market had a, a huge spike in the pandemic because of the worrying of mothers about her daughters so they want to buy more stuff and to get them ready in case of got uh, the infection so they want to be assured uh, of the marriage stuff and actually with the cancellation of all events and all parties a lot of these budget is went to enhancing the marriage stuff and the, the um, and the uh, stuff that needs to, to for for the homies. So, just once we witness that, we double down the suppliers and the products and the variants of this category, and we 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 weren't arrogant uh, towards our assumptions. So flexibly, we adjusted our focus to enhance the household category, and we listed in three months like. 200 new products in the household industry and it becomes 40 percent of our business right 40%. now 40 percent household you were already in it but it was it was a very minor category for you and yeah in in just a matter of months it's it's spiked to that to that it, level it wasn't it wasn't minor to mm -hmm. be honest it wasn't minor but it okay. was like 25 or 28 but it has a spike to be a 40% and with our focus on it and mm -hmm. uh, and the expansion of the variance and the variety of the product and widen the portfolio of the category, uh, it, 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 it reaches 40% uh, reaches of, the, of the business. So, so you've learned a lot. <laughs> You've had to change um, the way. So the, the another, so oh. the another interesting thing we, we, we faced with your pandemic, the performance of our heroes during the pandemic and most of part of them got got corona and they were working with the corona because david 35 of egyptian families depend on women as a sole breadwinner they have a responsibility and they have to 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 maintain their lifestyles and a lot of males in the pandemic and lockdown lost their jobs and so they were working in the pandemic and I, I couldn't forget a phone call from one of our heroes that she called me and she she ha she, she 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 she's she lived she's living in a rural area in Egypt and in a in a in a district that got many coronas so the country uh, 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 restricted it and uh, applied a full lockdown on for for this district so she's she 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 offered to receive all the shipments of this district and will receive it before the the lockdown on before the the restriction and she will take it inside and she will deliver inside the inside the district wow so wow. this was really inspiring it really stepped up and and yeah they supported your model not yeah and that, not just for themselves but for their for their for their community for their tribe yeah 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 that's amazing now you've you've the journey is not as far from over for, for you but you are at um you've been able to secure funding you've grown your business you now have a a, um, a clear idea of what 
how flexible you need to stay because things change and you've been able to adapt. How is this going to affect your business moving forward? What does this, what does this mean for Bremore? Um, what you've learned in this period? Um, are you going to start working from home more? Are you going to, what, what is it, what is going to change uh, in Bremore now? Actually, um, the, the, the best thing we got from this period is the resilience. So we become more believers in, in our model and in, in our company that we can cross a lot of challenges, we can cross everything. We can, we will be laser focused on what we will, on what we want to achieve, disregard any, anything is happening in the world. So we did, we, we, we were working remotely in a very operations industry and we grew 200 times in the past six months. So uh, the resilience is one of the, one of the best outcome we got from, from, uh, from the pandemic and from the past period. The other part is the confidence in our model as the pandemic shows how fundamentally we are building a solid business model and a healthy unit economics because from the first time we I believe personally that the scale can't fix a, 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 a wrong unit economics the unit economics mm. should be built fundamentally healthy and profitable on the transaction you can take this the gross profit and to be invested in in, in any aspect of the business but the, the transaction should be profitable so in 2020 in the first six months, we did like uh, two times what we did in whole 2019, and we grew on margins with 30%. So we become more confident in our, what we are doing. We become more confident in, in, in how fundamentally uh, we build the, 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 the model. And we now, we are comfortable to move forward and to accelerate our plan to dominate the Egyptian market and to reveal, uh, uh, to reveal our, uh, the, 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 uh, to yeah. reveal about, yeah, there, about the more and to move more bolder with taking over the warehouse operations and delivery operations. And we noticed a lot of credit sales that the heroes sells to their consumers in credit they buy us they buy from us in cash and they sell in credit so we need to fix this operating cycle by establishing a microfinance pro company yeah. and microfinance products that's not consumable but to to enhance operating capital and to to enhance operating cycles and to be utilized to leverage the economy and to leverage the lives of the people so the, the, the vision become more clearer in what we are doing and the arms that we will move with. So we met for the first time last year at the, the, the VC4 Venture Showcase and um, Brimore had a, a, a packed room of investors listening to them. And I, I, I understand now, I think for me, um, what you, what you, the way you communicate and the way you've built the company shows a real understanding of the market in which you operate and a real care for the, the audiences that you serve, but also um, a very clearly commercially savvy business model. So uh, kudos to you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we, we were able to share this story. It's an important story. And I think a lot of people, whether they're in your sector or not, um, they can learn from that resilience and and that m mindset that you that you had from early on that has been able to you know uh, keep you grounded because in this pandemic everybody had to go back to basics. What is the core thing that you are doing? And, and you know if we have to re replot uh, re uh, decide on how to now pursue it in a in, through a very different path, then so be it. And uh, I think uh, you and your team have been able to do that perfectly well, judging by the numbers, not just the, uh, and also by the relationship that, that seems to be growing between you and um, your heroes, as you call them, you know? So um, well done. And thank you for, for 
taking the time to to be on the on our on our show. So, Thank you, David. Uh, it's my pleasure, and uh, I'm super happy to uh, to have uh, to have such composition. And uh, actually, thanks for VC for Africa. We we have we are in a in a in a continuous communication with a couple of VCs that we met uh, in, yes. in the showcase. So thank you very much for Happy your to hear that. for Africa. And so that's what yeah, we're doing. Thank you. We want to make sure that, that you get the support that you need wherever 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 um, you need it. So, so take care. That. Thank you. We will, we will <laughs> talk soon. So that's it for this episode. Like, subscribe, and watch out for upcoming episodes. Um, for free mentorship and great entrepreneurship training, head over to vc4a.com and sign up. Hope you join us again next time. Take care.